So, okay, we've determined we've got weeds in here. The indicators of the weeds are what? Compaction, anaerobic conditions, wet conditions. Um, the dockweed, for example, it's, it's got a, a very strong root system. So why would it have a strong root system in the conditions that it's there? Bring up nutrients, it's low nutrients. Bring up nutrients, open the soil up. The roots can actually get down into the, that really tight soil and, and start to fracture it open and, and therefore the nutrients are starting to move and, and we're going to get an opportunity for nature to actually start to heal itself as, as well. So it's, it's going to change the formation. I mean, obviously if you cultivate the soil and the seed starts to germinate, it's going to say, oh, I love these conditions, and it'll sort of um, tend to open the soil up. But anyway, that's what the weeds do. So what we need to do is we need to assess whether we can change the soil in a way that's going to be economic and, and viable as well. And there's a correlation I've found over the last couple of years using that fairly regularly when I'm out taking soil samples. Um, manure pads. But it is amazing the difference between a urine or manure pad and that's been there for a while and then you go a metre away and compare the difference and there is a, a definite pattern, a correlation there. The biology in that manure has had an effect in the soil structure, the viability, the, the friability. Um, the patterns are there. I've seen it, seen it many, many times over. Something you can try again if you've got access to a penetrometer or you want to use a penetrometer, try it. Even try it with a coat hanger. It's the same with, yeah. I haven't got a penetrometer, but I do it with shovels. Yeah. And if I take people around, like, make you think twice about thistles too, because in the middle of summer, you can't put your shovel in there. Yep. You go to a thistle, goes in, pull it up, worms, soil yep. structure. So, we need those organisms. That, the message there is the organisms. <laughs> the message there is the organisms will build that soil structure, won't it? Won't they? So ultimately, sorry, Michael, but we won't need that. <laughs> but, but, but the thing is, at this point in time, we do need it to get this productive and to get it opened up again. I think you We're do need it when you when you're growing a green manure crop. You want to invert it. Yep. Or partially so, invert. This is this like Elaine was talking about it er, um, earlier today about a green manure crop. You have the right biology and everything there, but the biology might be there, but the moisture may not be there on the top. So if you use that as a partial inversion, so you're pushing uh, your your, your um, plant matter part into the soil, some of it's still out, you'll have caprile reaction working along it mm -hmm. and uh, your organisms be able to put, uh, able to break it down. Yeah, so, so that trash that you've got at the top there, whether it's green or dry or whatever, has a chance to have contact with the soil and the tusk rollers will actually do that job yeah. for you. So it's still a decision that you need to make as part of the management program and, and where, your, where your starting point is with the soil in the first place. You know, if it's really, really degraded and, and you need to get that open and get the oxygen and, and the water penetrating in there and give the plants the opportunity to become established and at the same time encourage the biology by making sure they're fed, then some of these machines are the way to go. Um, we can't all afford to take a paddock out of action either, so another machine that I'm really... Um, in favour of is the airway type aerator groundhog and they're the spiked ones that uh, allow you to still maintain production but at the same time begin to open up the soil a little bit as well. You, you're putting holes into the soil and uh, I mean that's what you're doing with the penetrometer. You've just started aerating the soil here as well. Imagine doing that across the whole paddock. But um, and, and then you can throw a little bit of lime or a bit of um, fertiliser around, the granular fertilisers and allow that to be incorporated through that, those passages that you've created. Uh. Question with those with those machines, like whether you're, you're obviously getting benefits, but there's downsides that you, you're obviously always going to create a compaction zone under the spike, like at the tip, mm -hmm. like you're compacting the soil, and also the, the, the smooth sides of it. You, you, like, it's important, and Michael will tell you, he's the expert in that area, you wouldn't use this machine, generally you would, probably wouldn't use it in these conditions here now. He was saying yesterday when he was setting it up, he said it's no, too wet. Yeah, I'd like to do it a bit drier. Yeah, and, um, so you're relying so on... So you're fracturing, because what, yeah. what this machine does, it will fracture the soil and allow it to break along its own lines rather than ripping through it, you know. Um, that's, that's, that's the whole idea. And, and, and the airways are the same. And air, mm. like you're lifting, you're lifting everything up and getting air into the soil. And um, well, as you all know, without air, you haven't got the right biology. Yeah. Well, again, I said to the group yesterday too that look at the biology as you would yourself. What, what do you need to survive, to thrive, to actually perform? You need warmth. 
biology needs warmth. You need air. You need food. You need habitat. Moisture. Water. Moisture. Without that, nothing happens. Temperature. So think of yourself as a little organism down there in the soil. Now, how would you behave if you had to live in there? It would probably be rather difficult, wouldn't it? So as managers of the soil, it's up to us to look at ways that we can do it the best way. And using equipment like that is one way. Um, you can do it a much slower way. I mean, this, this will actually get your ground productive in a very short period of time, a matter of weeks. Um, you can use a biology, you can cover it with compost and let the organisms do that sort of work for you as well. So a lot of energy in, in those little critters that are working away. So, I mean, would, would we, given that the information that we've got from this now, would we now start to look at applying a mechanical aid to open up the soil? If it was your bit of ground? Certainly be the quickest way. It'd be the quickest way, yeah, very good. Yep. You've got to look at economics as well. So yeah. Don't you? you want production from your ground, so you yep. have to do whatever you have to do. And that's Definitely. one of the things I always say, the most important thing is for people to make a living. You can be, you can have an ide ideological um, uh, idea, but you've got to eat and feed your family first. Yep. So whatever you have to do to do that, I think you need to. That's right. Made this machine himself. Yeah, he, he's had Alex Podolinski have input to it as well, uh -huh. and and that's quite remarkable in itself if you know that. Mm. Yeah. Um, there are a few others out there in the marketplace. There's an Italian one that's very very similar, but he's put into the design a lot of work so that mm -hmm. when it's driving along, mm. you can see it actually lifts rather than just pulling it through. It actually lifts. You can see underneath the tractor there, just behind the back wheels. Oh, yeah. And it's what it's doing is lifting and then the fuss rollers are coming through and just breaking the clods up a bit. Yeah. But the other thing I tend to do too, maybe before making a decision as to whether you're going to go down the path of um, using equipment uh, and take any management action for that matter, is take a sample of soil, um, have a look at it, smell it, feel it, see if there's any fungi in there. Uh, smelling the soil, acid, acrid, um, put, put putrescent, you know, not, not good signs. Um, so use your senses to, to determine what your course of action is likely to be next. And, and then of course, you know, anything that you put on the soil too needs to be uh, something that you as an organism would like to eat or, or be part of as well. And so you are the organism, you smell it. If it smells nice, it'll be right. If it doesn't, it probably won't be.